Hello and welcome back. So I'm going through an L5 M1 learning objective three. And this time we're gonna look at a case study uh, as well as a 25 mark question. So hopefully you'll find this useful. This is the question that we're going to be answering today. Recommend actions to reduce the potential causes of conflict and improve team cohesion within the procurement department at X Systems. So as we're looking through this, you need to be thinking about the potential causes of conflict and what they could do about them. And again, this is a question that's really wide open. There's numerous different theorists you can mention, and there's lots of different practical things that you can suggest. So let's have a look at the case. X Systems is a large technology company which has experienced rapid growth since it was formed 35 years ago. The new Chief Procurement Officer, CPO, is Eli Kahn, who has been in the position for one year. Under Kahn, the Procurement Department has established a culture that could be characterised as extremely competitive. Employees jokingly call it the we'd better get going culture. When new procurement initiatives are introduced successfully within the organisation, the buyers responsible are not allowed to celebrate. This sounds fun, guys. Instead, they undertake a post-mortem of what could have been done better. Khan often sends out emails to procurement staff in the evenings and weekends about the challenges ahead. These are popularly referred to as call to action memos. Khan justifies his approach by stating, I manage smart people that are high caliber and I challenge them to think. I pay them well and in return, I ask them to be committed and to work very hard. So Khan sounds like a guy who doesn't respect boundaries. For many years, the procurement department had one of the lowest staff turnover rates in the company. However, over the last year, since Eli Khan has been appointed, a large number of procurement staff have resigned. Most of the employees that have resigned have worked for the company for between five and 10 years and have played an important role during its growth phase. So we've got a lot of knowledge in, you know, from these staff, they're long-termers. As the company grows in size and power, it has become more bureaucratic and has lost some of the elements of the work culture that had so endeared it to the employees when it was growing. X Systems no longer has the flexibility of a startup company and it's become very difficult to push decisions throughout the system. So this is a problem because we're in technology, fast moving and so on. They've become a little bit static. And just to prove this, look at the next sentence. There are five layers of management in the procurement department, which hinders quick decision making. Staff are asked to justify everything they do. No one is spared from criticism and people are severely reprimanded doesn't sound great, when they fall short of Khan standards. Khan holds regular meetings with all procurement staff to check their progress. So dreaded are these meetings that employees are known to have mock sessions with their colleagues in order to prepare themselves for the actual event. One senior category manager who recently left X Systems after seven years quoted a lack of the human element in his exit interview. Khan is also experiencing difficulty in recruiting people. A number of graduates are choosing smaller companies with smaller reward packages, mainly because of the exciting challenges that they offer. One typical candidate got job offers from X Systems and Dynamic Software Inc, a maker of e-commerce programs, after he graduated from a top class university. In spite of efforts by Khan, he chose Dynamic because X Systems could not match Dynamic's fun loving culture. In order to fill the skills gap in procurement, Khan has employed many agency staff and these temporary workers now constitute one third of the total workforce of that department. So people are leaving en masse and people don't want to join anymore. So we've got a real issue. X Systems Human Resource Department has become concerned with the situation in procurement and has just published a critical report. Within the findings, the report highlights the lack of team cohesion in the procurement department and poor engagement with stakeholders. So it's not just us that are worried, HR are on the ball too. So if we go back to the question, recommend actions to reduce the potential causes of conflict and improve team cohesion within the procurement department at X Systems. So we need to do a few things here. We need to recommend actions to reduce causes of conflict, but also look at how we can improve team cohesion within the procurement department. So let's define conflict. It's defined as a clash between individuals arising out of a difference in thought process, attitudes, understandings, interests, or requirements. And he definitely feels like that's the case within X systems. So before we even drill in 
to the different ways that we can fix the conflict and create greater team cohesion, we need to say what's causing conflict in the case. And let's be honest, the majority of it is probably Eli himself. So the inability of staff to celebrate successes, the out of hours emailing, the chief procurement officer criticism, the use of agency staff, costly and without the accountability because they're not gonna stay there long-term, the extremely competitive culture, the poor engagement with stakeholders. I would say the words that they use about being severely reprimanded. All of this can be your kind of introductory paragraph to say, you know, there's a lot going wrong here. And really a lot of this is down to Eli himself. And then we have to apply theory to the points. And when we're talking conflict, there's lots of different theorists. You can use Robbins, you can use Mullins, or you could use Thomas Kilman or many more, but these are the, probably the three most popular ones. I personally think that Thomas Kilman is a little bit too simplistic. And so I prefer Robbins. And sometimes I like to throw in a little bit of Mullins as well. So that's what I've done in this question. But that's not to say that if you answered it with a different theorist, that you'd get, you wouldn't get the marks. You would. It's just how you answer the question. So first point, which is a Robbins theory, is all about altering the structural variable. This is where effort is made to reorganize work relationships in order to minimize the potential for conflict. So essentially just restructuring a department so you no longer have to see each other. Um, and I think when we're talking about altering the structural variable, the team were working really quite well. They were there for a long time and so on. And it seems like Eli's the one causing a lot of the issues. So the question would be, should he stay as a manager? Also, the fact that they have those five layers of management, that structure isn't working either. It's not fast enough and it's creating a complete cultural change from the fun loving dynamic scenario that it used to be to what it is now. So maybe they need to look at altering that structural variable. Another Robbins theory is about altering the human variable. That effort is made to change the attitudes, beliefs and perceptions underlying the conflict. So there is an, essentially a need to change the culture and attitudes and beliefs of Eli, not the team necessarily, but Eli um, and the whole procurement team to be treated more as humans than machines, to respect the boundaries of outside the office and so on and so on. So we may need to alter Eli as the variable. Another approach is compromise or bargaining. Bargaining, negotiating and conciliating so that each party makes some concessions in order to obtain some gains. So if they're losing out on a lot of new talent, this is maybe what X systems may need to do with new job applicants more, maybe in order to stop relying on these agency staff. So they're gonna to have to bargain with them or give their higher packages or maybe give them more flexibility, whatever it may be. It might not just be down to the money, it might be down to other factors. So they need to really look at what they're offering so they're not stuck with all this agency stuff. And then I thought it was important to throw in how they could improve team cohesion. Now there's lots of different points here and these would be separate paragraphs and so on, but I wanted to put them all on one slide because it's all about how they can get the team more cohesive and working together. So better communication, not out of the office time emails. So you're not expected to be reading emails at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Changing the management style, linked to more of a person focus rather than task or machine. So a human resources approach rather than a classical approach, say. We're linking back to Learn Objective 1 here, but that's what we need to do in this module. You could reference the Hawthorne studies about how, you know, putting people into teams and getting them to work together made them um, much more efficient. Cultural change needed. They need to go from a power culture where Eli holds all the power to a more kind of task or progressive one that's focused on the output. And maybe not overnight, but they do need to remove the agency staff and offer better employment packages to try and attract new talent who are going to stay there longer. Um, and also to keep the people that have stayed because they've lost a lot of people as well. And that's a lot of um, knowledge that they've lost out of that business. So to address this full question, you need to not only say what's causing the conflict, suggest ways of improving it, 
and how you can improve that team cohesion as well. So if you go through all of these and create some points and arguments, and throw in some examples from the case, then you should be onto a merit or a distinction quite easily. But a lot of the times people aren't, students in particular aren't interrogating the case as much as they should. There's a lot in here, so make sure you get it all down. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll catch you back for another constructive response exam answer soon. Bye for now.